Apparently we got the rules of the senior sniper versus the old Mike Tyson boxing match. And it managed somehow to be an even bigger joke than when it first got announced. They're gonna be wearing pillows on their hands. No decision win for either fighter if it goes the whole way. And it's a much shorter fight, making it more likely to go to that decision. So here are the rules. Now these come from various different sources, all pretty much saying the same thing. 16 ounce gloves instead of the usual 10 ounce gloves. So they're using sparring gloves. 16 ounces are literally sparring gloves in training. Two minute rounds instead of the usual three minute, cutting the fight down by a third of the time. There's gonna be no official judges that score the fight, which means that the only way they can technically win is by knockout. And each fighter has to pass the EEG test and the EKG test. And I'll explain what those are, but the first four rules that you see here pretty much shows that it's an exhibition fight without headgear. So these are similar rules to the Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. exhibition boxing match. So Jake Paul went from having some exhibition fights in the beginning to professional fights back to the rules of an amateur fight. And people read this knockout rule as something more dangerous because it says that knockouts are the only way to win. But that's not what it really means. What it really means is that the fight is most likely going to go to a decision and therefore no one wins the fight because they're wearing sparring gloves and the fight is so much shorter. Right, The shorter the fight is, the more likely it's going to go to a decision. The bigger the gloves are, it's harder to knock the opponent out. And these are the only rules that we really know about. Now, these rules can change depending on who's handling who's in charge of the fight. You know, the rules can definitely change, especially if too many people become upset with the rules. And now about these two tests that the boxers have to go through. The EEG test stands for the electroencephalogram test, which is pretty much just testing the condition of the brain. But if you want the full definition of it, this is how it's described under WebMD. An EEG is a test that records the electrical signals of the brain by using small metal discs called electrodes that are attached to the scalp. Your brain cells communicate with each other using electrical impulses. They're always working even if you're asleep. The brain activity will show up on the recording as wavy lines. It's a snapshot in time of the electrical activity in your brain. And the conditions that it can find are Alzheimer's disease or other types of dementia, brain injuries, kreutzfeldt jacob disease, a brain disorder that can get worse over time, drug overuse, epilepsy, infections, psychosis, sleep disorders, stroke, and tumors. So I think this is used mostly for Mike Tyson given his age and how much brain damage he has taken in his career and other maybe age-causing disorders or anything from there. As many times as Mike Tyson has fought in professional fights, he has sparred much more, taken a lot of damage to the brain. And we're talking about back in the 80s and early 90s where CTE was not nearly as well understood. In fact, I don't even think it was a, a big topic amongst combat sports back in those days. In fact, there are fighters that we know about like Vanderlei Silva who's even said that back in the day they used to think getting hit in the head would make your head harder instead of the reverse and maybe boxers like mike tyson thought the same thing or that's just vanderlei silva being vanderlei silva mike tyson's been knocked out many times in his career and the older you get the worse your chin is going to be so he could have some bad brain damage which is why this test is going to be very important in this fight in determining if mike tyson is even capable of fighting jake paul but i believe they did the same thing when he fought roy jones i believe they tested both guys but considering that he's fighting a much younger person the results of the test might be a lot more important here and the ekg test stands for the electrocardiogram test which pretty much tests the conditions of the heart and i think they're doing this more so for mike tyson given his age according to webmd is described as such a simple and painless test that measures the electrical impulses of your heart to check for signs of heart disease is done through small electro patches that a technician attaches to the skin of your chest heart and legs with the ekg test your doctor can quickly check your heart rhythm see if you have poor blood flow to your heart muscle diagnose a heart attack check on things that are abnormal such as thickened heart muscles see whether there are electrolyte abnormalities such as high potassium or high or low calcium levels um, I don't know if boxers usually go through these tests. It could be a general test that most boxers go through, but I'm pretty sure they're emphasizing it here, more so for Mike Tyson. But how funny would it be if Jake Paul failed the EKG test, right? The heart test. I can't make assumptions why he would fail, but you guys probably can in the comments. Not saying that I agree, by the way. A lot of fighters have said something about Jake Paul and how his body has been changing over the years. His heart might be screaming for help for all we know. Now, here's the thing. I did mention before that the rules could potentially change, and I think a big reason if they do change is because it could cause the fight to sell much less. You know, if, if fans come to learn, they might not be willing to watch the fight. 
given how silly the rule set are. But it's a circus fight in the beginning, and that hasn't changed. It's a 57-year-old Mike Tyson versus someone 30 years younger than him. But then again, if you're willing to watch Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, maybe for these kind of people, the rules are not really going to make much of a difference. I'm going to be watching it regardless. And I could say the rule set like this is not going to change my viewership, but for a lot of people, it might. For someone like me who likes the best skilled, most technical fights in the world to even the circus fights, I won't say I like it, but part of me enjoys even the circus fights. I mean, I watch Vitor versus Holyfield, and I watch Kimbo versus Dada 5000, and I doubt Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson can ever be as bad as Kimbo versus Dada 5000 was. But there are a lot of people that don't care about this stuff, and especially for people who are on the fence, this rule set might tip them over the other side to not even watching this at all. I mean, there is a chance that Mike Tyson could potentially catch Jake Paul or use his veteran skills to get this to a decision and win that way, possibly. It's unlikely, but it is possible. Now with him not able to win by a decision, which I think was put together because they don't want a loss on his record, even if it is an exhibition or professional, doesn't matter, that does take away an avenue for Mike Tyson to potentially win through his veteran experience and higher knowledge of the game and to win by knockout. I mean, Jake has a higher potential here to win by knockout, so I think it favors him. I wonder why, which boxer here is the one that wanted this rule set? That's what I'm wondering. Or if it's just the athletic commission. If neither boxer wanted this rule set and it was just the commission that said, yo, if a 57-year-old boxer is going into this, we got to place these stipulations so nobody can get hurt. I can see how some people would argue that it's silly because brain damage is a part of boxing and trying to protect an old boxer while competing. But the commission's always applied rules to protect certain boxers, depending on their skill level, depending if it's a professional fight or exhibition fight. The rules that we have right now for pros are different than the rules we had back in the day, for an example. Like 12 rounds instead of 15. You know, boxers like Rocky Marciano 70 years ago used to fight for 15 rounds instead of 12. Amateur fights also have different rules, like where they wear headgear or bigger gloves. So I'm not surprised they're adding rules to this to protect Mike Tyson, given his age, even if brain damage is a part of the sport. You know, if they're going to make it an exhibition bout, you're going to see rules like this. Now, does this change on who I think wins the fight? No, I think this actually is better for Jake Paul to win this. He doesn't have to worry about gassing out. Even if he takes a big shot from Tyson, because of the bigger gloves, it's going to cause less damage than if they had smaller gloves. So the room of error of him getting caught by a slower, older Mike Tyson is now even less threatening. Whereas on the other side, even though Jake has 16-ounce gloves... Because of how old Tyson is, he can still knock him out with those. Much easier than the other way around. So yeah, I still think Jake is going to beat Mike Tyson. And probably even more so now. But I'll be watching still. Just see how it goes down. I wonder how many concert performances there's going to be. I wonder how long the runtime is going to be. Watch when the main card's like 6 or 7 hours long. Even though it's only going to have like 4 or 5 fights. Just because of all the commercials and the talking and the musical performances and all that stuff. But leave in the comments below. Are you willing to still watch this? Who do you think wins with the new rule set? And did they mess up with the rule set in your opinion?